Okay. Okay. All right. So I've been asked uh, a question on, you know, if you've got a very intense job, if you've got a very intense job, but you're also very spiritually dedicated, and also the context of many of the enlightened teachers who seem to like go off into the middle of the desert for months uh, or live in a park for years or whatever, radically change. Like what do you do if you have um, a very sort of high intense or a high, uh, high powered job? Um, I don't see there's any problem at all. I don't see there's any conflict. Um, I, I would resolve the question through levels of consciousness and through one's own inner devotion. And at each level of consciousness where one is, um, for me, uh, if you are in, attracted by enlightened teachers and their teachings and their level of devotion, um, wherever, if, if that's an attraction, it might not be an attraction, but if that's an attraction, that to get to those places with that one-pointedness of mind where one is in the grace or in, in the fields of observing or the times now, if that's uh, something that's called, but then you're stuck in a high-powered job today, and you don't, you know, you can't sit in, in the park for like two or three weeks because they won't do it. It's not, it's not a problem because for me, it's like when you get the calling to do this spiritual work, wherever you're at, you're at a certain level of consciousness. But now your in, inner spiritual intention is to move in that direction. But you have to take into account that your karma will mean that you start the journey at a certain point. Uh, in your life sequence and your intention is to move is essentially you're moving up the levels of consciousness you see and you're resolving each level of consciousness you're at uh, if you don't understand what I'm saying I'll try and explain it more you're resolving each level of consciousness because there'll be hooks where you're at which you'll have to transcend because that's the level you're currently at you know so when you're say you're at a, a medium vibration when you get the call to do transcending work and you're in a high-powered job, then you'd stay in that high-powered job. There'd be no, there'd be no, I mean, it's not, until you're at the level of near enlightenment, those, the attractive field automatically synchronizes circumstances so that you do end up in a park, or you do. But that's appropriate when you've transcended a lot of stuff, and then synchronicities and things and life events, and even the dis dissolution of the ego at that point will arrange circumstances at that point. So you'll then have a life that would probably resemble a lot of the enlightened teachers. But when you, you know, if you get, if you read like uh, Dr. Hawkins and you're in a high powered job, then the thing at that point is because you have your karma. You know, people who have resolved or have karmic, uh, shall we say, fortuitous karmic circumstances they will naturally have a life that will orchestrate at that level of consciousness. Uh, so if I'm, in a, if I'm like in a high-powered job and I'm paying a mortgage and I've got lots and lots of responsibilities and that is not, that is not you know, there's so many responsibilities and you've got, you're being hooked by the job, you're being triggered by the job, you've been triggered by your responsibilities, then it would be just not, because it would, it would be, for me, it's like intuitive, if you ask me, it would be intuitive that you should stay in that job for the time being. Your work is to transcend how your ego, because let's say, I, you know, I was working, with, I used to be working in the stock market. My, my story is a bit different, but if I was working in the stock market and I wasn't like half dead with kidney failure, um, then, and I got attracted to, to Dr. Hawkins' work or enlightenment, I would have stayed there. I wouldn't have. I mean, it was like, you know, I was half dead, so it was, the decision was made for me. I had to, like, give a full devotion. But I would have actually stayed in that job. Let's say I had my health, and I would have started transcending the environment uh, because I'd be at that level of consciousness, which is what I deserve. I would have a karma where my ego says, you currently deserve this to resolve. This is your, this is your life purpose at your current level of consciousness where you should be resolving heavy, dense ego personalities and your heavy, dense ego attraction to being in that. So, so I'm at a, let's say I'm in a middle level of consciousness. Okay, the work is now, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I feel an inner calling to transcending, is to apply with as much ferocity as I can to transcend that environment. Let's say I'm transcending, like I'm transcending that my boss triggers me, I'm transcending the fear of losing my job. I'm transcending that everyone's irritating. I'm transcending that I can't be living in a park. Why haven't I won the lottery and I can't, you know, just, just sit in the park and 
and going to the observer for the whole day. So a lot of triggers will be coming up because mm -hmm. you're called to that. But as I start transcending, what, what I mean by transcending is applying all the tools I share in this group. And also, I'm in 12-step groups. You could share those tools as well. But, you know, so in reality, uh, in every situation, nothing is happening. Yeah, nothing is happening. The only thing that is happening that creates experience is that you, the ego identifies with things, uh, like, shall we say, using language, is identifying with time, is identifying with the manager as being special, is identifying with money as being special, is identifying is comparing that enlightened teachers have it easy. So all of this is creating experience. Actually, nothing's happening right now. But those are the hooks that are creating time, uh, you know, having to work, intensity. Actually, in a high-powered job, nothing really is happening except that your ego's hooking and being triggered by lots of stuff, which is then creating tiredness and exhaustion and wishing that one was living in a desert with it, or having won the lottery or something like that. So actually, it's appropriate at, your, at one's current level, you know, if I hadn't been half dead, um, it would be appropriate me, for, for me to now transcend that. And then my level of consciousness will increase because now the boss is not triggering me. Now the fear of losing my job is not triggering me. Now, um, whether I lose the job or not, you know, I've transcended that. Whether the boss likes me or not, I've transcended that. I may have issues around morality, like the company may be dishonest and I'll have to resolve, like, you know, can I transcend standing for the truth without the fear of being sacked? You know, so you're just resolving that until those that those things aren't registered by your ego. That means you transcended. If that makes sense, you know, it's like whether I whether the boss says that you're sacked or not, whether I have money or not, you transcend those, and then your ego doesn't register them. What creates exhaustion and tiredness for people who are in high-powered job is that your ego is being so highly triggered by the environment, both your internal relationship to the environment and the external hooks, that then creates like complete exhaustion. Like if I said to somebody like, uh, just walk around in the park for five hours, they wouldn't usually be very exhausted at the end of it because their ego is not really going, identifying too much with those as being stressful triggers. If it's like, right, right you're responsible for, for a thousand people and if, you, if you're not, then you're going to be sacked, you know, if you're not perfect. And if your ego registers that as being important, then you'll start to feel like exhaustion and your ego will be trying to go into performance anxiety because you're registering things. You know, the ego has those hooks haven't been transcended. To the extent you transcend hooks, you know, by doing like the placing them into God's infinite light and love and praying for miracle transcends, going to the observer when you're being hooked or taking time to just allow the feelings to be experienced or whatever it is, whatever transcendence tools you're using or even have going to the toilet every half an hour and just resolving because you have, you've got such a high pressure job then those hooks become less intense you're resolving the outcomes as Hawkins would say you know what's the worst possible outcome and usually like for me it would be like the boss will come in and say I've discovered you're a fraud you're useless mm -hmm. and you're fired and then I'll have to transcend, well, I won't have any money. But you can transcend that as well. As, you know, you're just transcending all the fears and all the things like, oh, they'll find out I'm not perfect or I'll have no money. There's usually the usual ones. These are like the end of the sequence, you know, because usually I'll have a hundred beliefs which I'm triggered by or I have to perform well. But really, why do I have to perform well? Well, if I don't perform well, then I'll, I'll go on disciplinary. Well, what's the problem with going on disciplinary? Well, if I don't go on disciplinary, then I'll be fired. Well, what's the problem with being fired? Well, if I'm fired, I'll have no money. What's the problem with having no money? Well, then I'll die. Well, what's the problem with dying? You know, so, so, so you transcend that. So if you've transcended that sequence, like you'll die if you're fired, then usually it's like, well, if you don't perform well, it's not, it's not a trigger anymore because you've transcended that. So one uh, shortcut is to transcend the worst stuff. That brings up the greatest emotional baggage and the worst pictures. Okay, you're fired, you're shamed, nobody likes you, you've got no money, you're on the street uh, and your teeth are falling out and then you die. Okay, so if you transcend that, there's no problem at work, is there really? So you just have a laugh yeah. because you've transcended all the hooks and all the fears and everything that's going, that could go wrong. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the same as walking the park because so what can they do? What can they do 
what can your ego do to yourself if you've transcended your ego's hooks and what the others can do? There's nothing happening there. So it's like just being, in the, so you'd have lots of energy because it's the ego getting hooked and traumatized by your internal hooks and the external hooks which is creating this exhaustion and it's creating experience. You know, when the ego is hooking into so much baggage and so much internal criticism and, and external, perceived external demands, well, then you start to feel like life is exhausting because you're not in the pure witnesser. You know, you're, you're engaged, you know, your ego is tracking, is getting hooked and triggered and emotions are coming up at such a rapid rate that it creates, uh, it creates like overwhelm. And, uh, or you, might, you may cope with that through addiction, like going into super adrenaline or going into donut addiction or going into like an affair or whatever it is to like create some extra juice so that you can carry on without having to transcend, you know, resolve, feel out those feelings. Um, okay, so <clears throat> I am giving you an answer. I'm trying to ver ver verbalize it because each, as you resolve something, your level of consciousness increases. And as your level of consciousness increases, synchronicities and miracles come in to orchestrate your environment at that new level of consciousness. <clears throat> when people start to get to very advanced levels of consciousness, automatically uh, jobs and everything automatically changes. You know, you know like I, I was helping somebody uh, in a, in a high-powered job. They had a managerial position and they were really, really stressed out by this and there was huge demands on them. So she was doing all the transcending work, 12-step and transcending work. And at a certain point, as she transcended the internal, suddenly a, a new job, an internal job came up. You know, she, she transcended the boss being stressful. She transcended her huge workload and stopped tracking it. <clears throat> and her level of consciousness, I could see it, her level of consciousness increased. It wasn't affecting her. And then suddenly this new job, and you know, and I could see it, like the job title she had was more glamorous. Uh, and then another job title came up, which was less glamorous, but with the same pay. You know, and now she was attracted. It was like her level of consciousness had now increased, where the things that hooked her into the ego mm. level of that dynamic were no longer attractive mm. to her new level of consciousness. So it's like the whole universe synchronized, and there was a job with a less, same pay, but a more boring department, yeah. a more boring title. Yeah, come in. Just a slightly, um, to put a different sort of slant of what you've just explained. So because of the trauma of my previous job, yes. which I was very invested in yes. and, and immersed with and identified with, yes. after that trauma, um, when I got pulled out by, by Universe, when it was the time, absolute critical time for me to be pulled out, I, have, I am not invested in what I do now. Oh. So it's almost like I feel, and I think that's why all these emotions are happening, because I'm not emotional about it, I'm not invested in it, I'm actually really the observer of what's happening to me. Um, and I'm getting suddenly everything I've ever wanted. Mm. I don't feel triggered at work, I don't feel like ego is working all the time, I don't feel any of those things I thought before. But what I do feel is that I don't have enough hours in a day for rest and my spiritual work, if that makes sense. Even though to a certain degree, it could be said that my calling was to do that work because I can see clearly how I can be of service in that job to other people, many, many people. But I don't have enough time in my personal life to rest enough, you know, just normal normal resting time. So for example, for me, optimal, I don't know if maybe I could be doing um, counseling beliefs around how many hours of sleep a night I need. Because one of those beliefs was that I, you know, that I feel ultimately at my best when I've had seven and a half to eight hours, and I'm okay. averaging now just six. Okay, well, fair, fair enough. There is the other way of doing it, which is what you're saying. You can also do what you're saying, I cancel my belief, I need eight hours of sleep a day mm -hmm. to be rested. So you can cancel that. You can, can you know, look, time, not, you know, you can cancel, I can't, you know, whenever someone talks, you can record yourself, like, moan all your problems onto a tape recorder, or now it's not a tape recorder, it's on your computer or whatever, or your phone, iPhone. And, and you'll hear your belief systems, you, you'll hear yourself speaking, like, I don't have enough time. I cancel my belief I don't have enough time. Um, I cancel my belief I'm always exhausted after the end of the day. 
I cancel my belief I can't do spiritual work if I've had a, a 50 hour week. Um, I cancel, I cancel, a great one for this type of thing is cancelling the adverse effects, you know, or the side effects. I, used, I did this with medication. So doctors said, like, here's the medication. They gave me a bag of 13 medication. It went down to one in about two years. And the doctor said he didn't know anyone else in the hospital that was taking less medication than me. And that was just by do what you need to do, but cancel there's any adverse effects to it. So I cancel my belief that work is tiring. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my belief I need, to, I need to ego track my work. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my belief that uh, my perform the whole company and the world rests on my performance. I'm an infinite being, you know, like I'm not ego. My ego is not going to save the world. Uh, it's the grace that's going to save the world. So you cancel all those things you track. Cancel your belief, you know, so also the thing with time, I mean, if you're talking about time, I mean, you have to track time to experience time, okay? So, like, you know, like, I like for example, on my YouTube channel, there's lots, I mean, I sh haven't actually done one. I should do one specifically on going to the observer of time. Well, I do do them in nearly every video. Look, time, you know, people who, who moan at, I shouldn't say moan, should I? Sorry. <laughs> people who experience a lot of time pressure are tracking time. You know, their egos are so invested in knowing every single second that's passed. And, and they're, I'm mean, not saying that's wrong. In certain jobs where it's like, you know, you have 17.5 seconds to do this task, you know, um, but even that can be meaningful to the ego. There is a place where you make time less meaningful and things still get, still occur. So, you know, you might be doing a lot of work around, like, the observer of, of what is it in me that tracks time, yeah? Because something is conscious of time. So you can cancel all your beliefs around time, not having enough time. Um, cancel your belief around exhaustion. But, you know, exhaustion or tiredness usually happens because the ego is tracking a lot of stuff. So what are you tracking? What in the day is so, you know, we use the word, the course uses meaningful or important or special. Things, you know, I would cancel everything. This is the thing, like, in order for me to, like, um, for me to hoover the floor, I don't need to track with my ego. That can happen in a state of observing, you know, hoovering the floor or, you know, whatever it is. So what engages the ego is that the ego feels it has a function it needs to identify with. It hasn't, been, it hasn't been released to grace to carry that function, if that makes sense. So you're, you're not, you know, like if I thought I didn't understand how to use in, uh, the hoover, then I would, put, I would start identifying with my ego, if that makes sense. But actually, when you transcend something, you don't need your ego to hoover the floor. The, the hoovering happens by grace. Does that make sense? But even with very, very complicated, demanding jobs, as you transcend something, grace will take that over for you. I know it Sorry, sounds funny. Just, yeah. what, do you mean um, ego or instinct instead of oh, well, you can use the word. You can use instinct yeah. if you like. Yeah. That's okay. Um, so it's like because the meaning and the importance of it, it has been released through whatever function, like placing it into God's infinite light of love, going to the observer. Each time you go to the observer of something, it, the ego's... I, current identifications and heaviness start to dissolve each time you do that and then eventually things it's almost like you're switching gears from grace handling even grace can even handle complex things even but you have to keep transcending and then the grace starts to or quite often a miracle will happen or you'll get it you'll get someone who will handle that task for you does that make sense um, is there a question still I've forgotten the question now I'm talking about. Uh, um, we were just talking about the spiritual teachers just having not a full time job and having such a demanding time. Okay, you? yeah, I got, I got the I remember the question. So if you if you're in the thing, you just cancel the beliefs, you cancel the meaning, uh, and uh, you're, you know, because as you transcend everything that's meaningful. But oh yes, everything. Write down everything that's special or important to you. Like what what is so important? Why am I so important in that job? Why is it so important for me to be perfect in that job? What is it in that job? Who are all the, 
who are all the important or special people in that job? What, you know, so all of those things you want to transcend by the various different, you know, placing it into God's infinite light and love. Understand that when, you, when things are meaningless, there is a state of flow in operating with them. Even transcending death and illness, you know, it's what creates, you know, what creates friction in life is resistance. Um, <clears throat> you know, like if you transcended the, the fear of death and the body dying, then it would be a peaceful, effortless process. You see, even if when I've been into, uh, I'm, like, I'm digressing, but you can transcend even operating procedures and physical illness. But it takes, it does take work, and you can transcend the workplace as well. And the miracles and synchronicities will come in. You can do the tricks like cancel those things which you feel like I cancel my belief. I need eight hours of sleep. I cancel my belief. I'm exhausted after the end of the day. I cancel my belief. There's there is an exhausted work is exhausting. Work work has the effect of I cancel the adverse effect that to do work means I'll be exhausted. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Because these are part of the collective beliefs. We all have collective beliefs like. To work means to be punished and to be exhausted because you have to earn your money. So you can you can imagine what are the collective beliefs in consciousness that everyone believes. Like who, who, I mean, people don't usually have the collective belief that work is fun and enjoyable and is like yeah, and gives you energy. That's not a collective belief in this, especially not in the not in the Western world. So you can cancel your your uh, collective beliefs. So um, yeah. Is that it's okay? Can I go to Antonio next, please?